how to set the parameters of a material or a material instance with C++ in Unreal, because you don't always want to use the default values. So let's get to it. As usual, new header file, and today we're also gonna need a little include right here at the top, the engine types.h, because we're gonna use an enum that is part of that header file, so we need to include it at the top if we want to use that enum. So that's done. Now, before we jump into the function, I'm gonna say it. All those functions today are just gonna work in the editor, they are not gonna work in in the package build because those functions are really going to be used to set the properties of your material assets in the content browser not your materials in game in game it's super simple to set the properties of your material so you don't need my help for that but in the editor you have to recompile the shader and everything so i'm going to help you through those steps it's also relatively simple but you have to know which functions to call so good that said now it's time to jump in the function so i'm going to scroll down a little bit right here and we have two functions the first function is going to be the set material asset scalar parameter we're going to use that function to set a scalar parameter and I'm not doing any other types of parameter today because they are all the same. Once you know how to set a scalar parameter, you know how to set a vector, a texture or any other types of parameters. They are all working the same way. So I'm just going to give you one example and then you can do all the other ones by yourself. So to set a scalar parameter, you need to first the path of the material you want to set the scalar parameter onto. So my material path right here, it can either be a material or a material instance. It's going to work for both of those. So I have the path of my material and then I have the name of the parameter I want to set so the name of the Scala parameter and then the value I want to apply to that Scala parameter super straightforward now let's take a look at the second function the set material asset other properties because on a material there's other properties than parameters there's for example the blend mode the shading model the two-sided and multiple other properties but they are all working the same way so I'm just going to use these three properties today in this function we just provide the path of the material or material instance once again so the material path right here and then the three properties that we're going to set today so we have the blend mode which is of type e blend mode so that's the enum i was talking about at the beginning of the video so the blend mode right here we're going to change that then we have the shading model that one should also be an enum but that enum is not available in blueprint so since i want to be able to decide which shading model to apply to my material through the user interface in blueprint i'm just going to convert it to an integer and then i'm going to convert it back to an enum in my code that way we will be able to set the shading model through the user interface in Blueprint. And finally, the last one is simple. It's just a little boolean to decide if we want the material to be two-sided or not. And then we're going to apply all those properties to our material or material instance. And that's going to be in the CPV file. So let's go in there. And in there, we're going to need a few includes. Actually, we're going to need four includes. We have first the material interface, which is the parent class of the material and the material instances. So since we want to support both of those, that's going to be the parent we're going to use to retrieve the asset from the content browser then once we have the asset we're going to need to cast it to either a material instance constant so the material instance or a material to know which type of asset it is is it the material is it the material instance and the way we're going to apply the parameters are going to be a little bit different from one to the other and finally the last include that we're going to need is the material editing library and we're going to use that one to recompile the materials and update them in the editor so the properties are set properly on the assets uh, good these are the following includes we're going to need and they are in two different modules so the engine and material editor so let's go make sure that those two modules are inside the build.cs file I have my material editor right here already and I have my engine up there so good I don't have to add anything in there myself you can add yours if you need to good okay let's go back in the cpp and in there we're going to take a look at the first function the set material asset scalar parameter the first step to set the parameter of a material is going to be to well load the material because that's just a path right here so we're just going to do a static load object to load an object object of type of material using the path that we receive as input. We receive the path right here. We cast it to a U material interface, which is the parent class of all materials. And that's going to give us a little object right here. If this object right here is not valid, it means that the asset is not there. So the material doesn't exist or your path is just wrong. So we cannot set a property on top of a material that doesn't exist, obviously. So here I'm just making sure that my material exists. But now that we know that the material exists and it's really a material interface, we can start setting the parameters onto it. But but as I said, there's two types of material that we want to support today. We want to either support the material or the material instance. And since those classes are a little bit different, the way to apply those parameters is also going to be a little bit different. So here, since we have a material interface, that's the parent of those two classes right here. We don't know which type of class it is yet. We know that it's a material interface. We know that it's there, it's valid, but is it a material or is it a material instance? We don't know that. So here, what I'm gonna do is just cast it to both to know which type of 
material I'm working with. So if my cast to a U material works, it means that I'm working with a material. If my cast to a material instance constant works, it means that I'm working with a material instance. And only one of those casts is going to work. A material instance cannot be a material, and a material cannot be a material instance. They are two separate objects. And what that means is that we can simply check if first my material is not equal to null. If it's true, well, it means that I'm working with a material. I have to set my properties on this material right here, not the material instance. And to do that, I'm going to scroll down a little bit, actually, because I'm running out of space and I'm going to directly set the properties on top of my material right here. So on my material, if I'm working with a material, I'm going to set a Scala parameter value editor only. So that function can only work in the editor, obviously. So material set Scala parameter value editor only. You have to provide the name of the parameter you want to set. Here I'm simply converting my string to an if name because that's what the function expects to receive. And then you have to provide the value you want to set to your Scala parameter. And this is my float I received as input. And that's how to set a Scala parameter to a material asset. And as I said, I'm not going to show you other examples because they are all the same. Actually, you just have to call the proper function. You can call the set vector parameter value editor only, texture parameter, static switch parameter, or any other types of parameter. You just need to call the right function for the parameter you want to set. And that's it, actually. We set the parameter on the material. Now we just have to actually recompile the material because that's how it works. Once we set the new parameter on the material, we have to recompile it. And that's why right here, I'm using the U material editing libraries to be able to easily call the recompile material function, feeding in the material. And that library is going to recompile the material for us so it gets updated in the editor. Perfect. So that's how to set a property on the material but what if you add a material instance, not a material? It means that the material will be null pointer right there. And then we can simply check, okay, you're not a material. So are you a material instance? If you're a material instance, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set the Scala parameter value on the material. So on the material instance, we're going to call set Scala parameter value editor only, feeding it the name of the parameter in the value once again. And same thing as for the material, you just have to call the right function depending on which parameter you want to set, obviously. And once that's done, you can can simply refresh the material by calling update material instance inside the U material editing library, update material instance, feeding it the material instance, and that's going to refresh it in the editor. And that's it. We're done. We've set the parameter of the material or the material instance, depending which object we receive as input. And here I'm calling the same function, but actually they are not the same. That function, the set Scala parameter value editor only function is in both the material and inside the material instance constant. It's not part of the parent. It's not not inside the material interface, it's really inside the material and material instance constant. So that means that those functions right here have the same name, the same parameter, and they do the same thing, but they are not the same at all. One is inside the material, one is inside the material instance. So you really have to cast to the class you want to use, and then you can call the right function. Yeah, that's a little bit confusing, but whatever, that's how it works. So good, now we've set the Scala parameter. But what if we receive a material that is not a material instance or a material and it is something else because that's possible. The material interface is actually parent of multiple material classes including the dynamic material instance but even though that dynamic material instance should not really enter this function right here because it doesn't have a material path it's not saved in the content browser here I'm just going to protect myself and add a little else right here to say that the material I receive as input is not a material or a material instance so either you have to add a way to support that type of material or you can just return right here and say that it was a fail. I was not able to set the Scala parameter on top of that material because I don't know what type of material it is. Good. Otherwise, we can just say that it was a success. We were able to set the parameter on top of that material. And now it's time to jump to the second function. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit right here to set the material asset. Other properties It's going to be a little bit different. It's going to start the same way. So you have to start by loading the material. So here, same thing, taking the material path, loading a material interface, checking to make sure that the material interface is valid obviously. And then we can start setting the properties. It's going to be the same as the previous function. So you have to cast it to both the material and material instance because they are working a little bit differently. And then we can start setting the properties. So if my material is not equal to null, it means that I'm working with the material. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit uh, right here. If it's a material, it's actually super simple. You just have to set the properties directly. So on my material, I have a blend mode. I'm setting it using the blend mode I received as input. 
super simple. On my material, I can set the shading model. That one's a bit more complex. You have to call a function. Ooh, so difficult. But you can simply provide it the shading model and that's going to set it to your material. And here it's a little bit more code than it should be because I'm converting my int to a shading model. So here I have an int, I'm converting it to an enum and then I'm feeding it to the function. But other than that, you can just provide the shading model and it should work. And finally, you can set the two-sided variable on the material and that's it. That's done. You set your proper Properties. You just have to recompile the material like the previous function so it gets updated in the editor and that's it. We're done with the material. If you add the material instance though, that one is a little bit more tricky. Not too much. A little bit. Because if you have a material instance, it means that it's a child of a material kind. It's an instance of a material. So the material already has properties and the material instance is going to override those properties. And that's why right here, all the properties come in pair because you have two variables to set for each properties you want to set on your material. Inside the material instance, there's a structure called the base properties override. So all the properties you want to override from the base material. And then you have to set if you want to override that property or not. So here I want to set my blend mode. So I'm just going to also say b override blend mode equal to true. Because I want to override the blend mode if I want to be able to set it myself, I need to override it first. So I'm telling the material instance to override the blend mode and then I can simply set the blend mode to whatever I want to. And that's going to be the same thing for all the other properties. So here for the shading model, for example, I'm setting the override shading model to true because I want to override it. And then I can simply set the shading model using the Int I receive as input that I convert to an enum first and then I'm setting the shading model and finally same thing for the two-sided so I say that I want to override the two-sided and then I'm setting the two-sided and that's it now the properties are set properly on the material instance I just have to refresh it in the editor so update the material instance feeding it to the material instance and that's it we're done actually so same as the previous function if it was not a material instance or a material I'm just going to leave a little warning right here otherwise we can say that it was a success and now it's time to go in Unreal to see if it works. And here I am in Unreal in a super simple scene. I have two little warriors right here. The one on the left has the material and the one on the right has the material instance. So they are going to react when we're going to modify the material and the material instance. The material instance is a child of the material and actually I'm just gonna show them to you right now. So this is my material right here. It's super simple. I have my emissive scalar parameter. That's the one we're gonna set. And here I also have a value for the opacity so we can test the different blend modes and Right now I'm using the default blend mode so there's nothing changed in there and then I can show you the material instance here we go I don't have any overrides anywhere it's just a basic material instance a child of the material that I just showed you and that's it so we're gonna modify the properties of both those materials using our little user interface as usual so I'm gonna open the user interface right here and here it is it's super simple I have a path right here a combo box that lets me decide if I want to modify the material or the material instance so we can test both of those I have a scalar parameter actually a spin box that lets me set the scalar parameter of my emissive that I showed you in the material. I have a combo box to decide which blend mode I want to apply to my material. Same thing for the shading model. And finally, I have a little checkbox to decide if I want my material to be two-sided or not. Then if I click on my button set scalar, it's going to take that value and apply it to the material. And same thing, when I click on the button set other properties, it's going to call our second function, applying all those three properties to our material. I'm gonna show you the graph real quick right here it's super simple when I'm clicking on set scalar I'm calling the set material asset scalar parameter function we created filling in the path of our material using the value in the combo box the parameter we're gonna use is the emissive that's the only parameter I have in my material so that's the one I'm gonna use right here and for the value I'm gonna use the value from the spin box obviously and then when I click on the other button it's going to call the set material asset other properties filling in the path of the material once again it's going to convert the int of our combo box to an enum the blend mode enum to fit it to our material and finally it's going to take the int of our shading model and the value of our checkbox to feed it to the function also here we go so let's go see if it works i'm gonna go here run my editor TT widget here we go so now i have two warriors they are both the same as you can see so i'm going to set the scala parameter so the emissive scala parameter onto my material and see what happens so set the scala okay it modified both okay that makes sense because the material instance doesn't have any overrides on the parent 
child quite yet. So when I modify the parent right now, it should also modify the child. So that's why right here, if I scale my emissive all the way to the max, both material are going to apply that value because there's no override in the material instance. Okay, that seemed to work. What if I create an override in the material instance? So I'm going to change the emissive of my material instance. Here we go. So now only the right warrior is going to shine a little bit brighter. Here we go. We can study it works. And if I go back on my material instead and set a lower value for my emissive on my material, which is the parent of both, we can see that only the parent changed. The material instance didn't change at all. So now I can change the emissive of both the warriors independently. Here we go. It seems to work. Perfect. So we're done with the Scala. The Scala seems to work perfectly. Okay, let's take a look at the other properties. Right now, all those properties don't have any override in the child. So if I change them in the parent, they should also have the same result. So let's set the blend mode to mask. Why not? So set other properties on the material. Here we go. Both changed because there's no overrides in the child yet. So when we modify the parent, it also modifies the child. Same thing if I change the shading model to unlit, for example, we can see that both are unlit. Actually, we don't see much because they are masked. So I'm just going to make them opaque. We can see that. Yeah, here we go. That one is unlit. This one is sh shining a little bit too much. So we don't see much. So I'm just going to set this color parameter. Et voilà. So it's a little bit more obvious that this one is unlit. Uh, okay, perfect. I'm going to go back to the material and now I'm going to test the blend modes. Uh, let's say I want mask. I'm going to set the blend mode to mask. There we go. It seemed to work. What if I change them to translucent? Set other property. They are translucent. It seemed to work. And then what if I make them two sided? Set other properties. Oh. Okay, here we go. It's a little bit more bright because now the geometry appears on both sides. Okay, I can put them to, let's say, clear coat instead, set other properties. Here we go. We don't see much because they are translucent. I can bring them back to opaque. We can see that. Here we go. When I modify the material, it also modifies the material instance because there's no override in the material instance yet. But let's add some override. So in my material instance, I'm going to put them to, let's say, uh, masked. Here we go. Only my material instance changed. Then instead of clear coat, I can put them back to unlit. Uh, here we go. I can remove the two sided because I don't want it on that one. And if I increase my scala, here we go. We can see that now both warriors are completely independent and I modified all the properties of both the material and the material instance. Here we go. We can see that it works pretty well. And if I reopen the material, you can see that all the values are in there. So I have my blend mode to opaque, shading model clear coat and two sided is true. My emissive is 0.62, which is different from the first value I had at the beginning. And then for my material instance, same thing. I had now I have an override on the emissive and it's 18 point whatever. And then I have overrides on the blend mode, chaining model and two sided to set them to opaque unlit and unchecked. Here we go. So we can see that it works pretty well and that's going to be it for today's video. So I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.